Okay, so welcome everyone to our monthly team call. Um, and I know that it's normally Wednesdays, but it's actually my birthday tomorrow and I made plans a long time ago. So I decided to make it the last Tuesday of the month. So that's why we moved it this month. Um, and Megan graciously um, had offered to do a call for us and I did a call for her team. I wanna say last month, I don't even remember. Um, but she's gonna to talk to us about Instagram tonight. Um, and Megan is a seven star diamond in her first CBC, a two star diamond in her second CBC, and a diamond in her third CBC, which is a lot of stars. Um, and if you guys don't know, like once you hit two star in a CBC, you can open, you can clone yourself and open up another business center, which is awesome. So that's how she has three. Um, and she is a two-time elite coach. She's also a two-star in her husband's business center. And she's a Success Club 10 all-star legend. How many months, Megan? Probably a lot more than 24. You're on mute. I think it's 47, 8, 9. That's maybe? amazing. I don't know. She's been a coach like four years-ish. Yeah, I've been a full, like, um, hardcore coach for almost four, but technically for six, which is crazy. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So um, why don't you take it away? Sure, sure. So I'm going to share my screen in one second, but just wanted to kind of thank you, by the way, for the introduction. And just to piggyback on that, because I know a lot of times people hear, um, and I'm sure you get this a lot, Jillian, um, and her call was awesome on my team, by the way. They're still talking about it. So thank you. Um, it's such a great call. So um, people hear accolades, people hear ranks, and they hear um, these stats, right? And it can seem like, oh, well, that just, just happened to her. And like I said, I've been a coach since 2011, like the end of 2011, I signed up like the week before Thanksgiving. It was, I think it was just my um, anniversary and it can be, you know, really discouraging sometimes like for me, at least when I hear those accolades, not to know the backstory. So for the first two years, I was so in and out of this business. I was like showing up when it was convenient. Um, I was very much a hobby coach and it paid me that way. You know, we hear this all the time and something finally clicked for me at the end of 2013. And I said, I'm not going to be sitting on this anymore. Too many people are walking across the stage at summit are, are quitting these jobs that, you know, that they didn't want to do. And I was in that situation and I was like, what am I doing? And so something finally clicked. And that was again, almost two full years in. So if you're in that position, if you're like, I'm two years, two, two years in, it's too late for me. Sometimes we feel like it's too late. It's never too late. I literally started over and it was hard. It was really hard to kind of like start and stop. But that once I started, I didn't stop. And so even when you have those tough days, and I think Jillian is such a good example of that, even when you have those life moments happen to you, you just have to keep going. You don't have to keep going at the speed necessarily that you are, but show up, post on social media, at least talk to a couple people a day, be there for your team, like just show up in some way because people will notice that. Um, and so just wanted to throw that out there. But um, all right, so today we're gonna talk a little bit about Instagram. I uh, talk very fast, I'm from New York, so I apologize, uh, but it's being recorded, thank God. So if you have any questions at the end, just ask me, of course. Um, totally, I love this topic, I love talking about it. And I'm not an expert, so you know everything I'm talking about is things I've personally learned from other coaches talking on my call, trial and error. I'm in this social media mastermind, so I've learned a ton from there. Um, and I'm still learning every single day. Um, I actually have to update this. I just made it two weeks ago and I have to still update this PowerPoint. So I'll definitely send it to Jillian so she could share it with you guys, but it'll probably be updated within a week. So I'm um, definitely reference back to it. Um, but what I want to say about Instagram is just like Facebook, just like any social media platform. Can you guys see my screen? Um, you want to make sure that you are treating it um, just like, just like your Facebook, you want to show up every day. You want to be consistent and have to know, especially with Instagram, I think more than Facebook, it's going to take time to build, really going to take time to build and see the traction, start to get people on your team and in your challenge groups from Instagram. So don't give it a week and say, I tried, it didn't work. That's going to take more than a week, you know, and have fun with it. For me, I love Instagram. It's my favorite medium. I prefer it over Facebook. And that's just because that's the kind of medium I'm on as a consumer. I go to Instagram first. So my people are on Instagram. If you're, if you love Facebook and that's where your people are, then keep rocking that. So if you're not ready to move on to Instagram, don't think just because you're learning this right now, you have to jump into this and die full force. I really think mastering one is better than trying to do both like kind of half-assed. So um, just wanted to say that because I know so many people have, including myself, I've watched so many trainings and thought, okay, now I have to just implement everything I just learned right away 
and totally let go of everything else I was doing when you totally don't have to do that. So this will be here for you. Um, and you know, just take everything with a grain of salt and implement what you think is most important to your specific business. So the, the reason I love Instagram is the goal is really to find people. And I'm really going to gear this more towards future coaches who you're going to really vibe with and then send them a message. <laughs> That's like the goal I use Instagram for. So I want you to think is who would you be most excited to talk to? What do these kind of people care about? So this is basically your avatar as people kind of say sometimes, or who's your ideal person? Uh, what are they scared about? What are their relationships like? Are they married? Are they divorced? Do they have kids? Are they in a significant uh, relationship? Are they single? Um, what kind of clothes do they wear? Where do they live? What are their values? So just take like two minutes really quick right now and write down everything about you that makes you you. So your hobbies, your relationship, values, religion, fashion, recreational activities, and a obsessions, all that. So I just wrote down a bunch of stuff that's, this is all my stuff that I do. Um, and just take a minute to do that really quick. Okay. So now, and you guys can of course expand on this later just to save some time is now I want you to take another two minutes really quick and write out hashtags that you like. And again, if you haven't really used Instagram too much, this is going to be something you want to do later. Um, but if you do use it or you like using certain hashtags, like write down certain hashtags that you, you use or you go to, and you like to search because you just want to find inspiration brands that you follow and restaurants you go to. There's so many more things you can also write down, but just for now, let's, uh, put it to those three. So take a minute to do that. Okay, so now everyone take out your phone. I'm assuming everyone has their phones. If you don't, you can save this for later. Um, if you're on your phone, you can just, you know, if you go out of the Zoom app, I believe it still stays up. Your face just might freeze, but hopefully you can, you can hear us. Um, and go to Instagram. So you actually go to the app right now and go to one of those pages that you wrote down. So either pick a hashtag. So I'm sure this is like review for you guys. So I apologize, but I'm kind of treating all these trainings like no one knows what Instagram is. So if you're looking for a hashtag, you're just going to go to the actual app, right? I'm in the app and you go to that search button on the bottom, type in the search and you're going to see tags and type in that hashtag. Or if it's a brand, you can do people because usually the, the brands would be under people and type in the brand. So say I want to do like, um, this is a bad example, so don't use this, but it, this is a fitness clothing company that I'm obsessed with. Um, so I'm just going to use them for now. So there's a clothing company called Gymshark that I absolutely love. Um, I would try to veer away from fitness um, stuff just because uh, I think you should find other things to find in common with people, but this is just what I can think of right now. So I'm going to use this as an example. So pick that restaurant, that hashtag or that brand that you like, go to their followers. So I'm going to go to their actual followers, people who are following them. And again, if this is something you really connect with, it has to be something that you're like, I'm obsessed with this brand. I love this restaurant, or I love this influence, or maybe it's just someone on social on Instagram that you love following. Um, there's a girl called, this is actually a better example. I'll use her. Her name is um, Lee from America. And she's got a really, really great account all about like natural health remedies and She's got a big following, but not too overwhelming of a following. She's not a coach, obviously. Don't follow any other coaches. Don't use them as examples. But I'm going to go, and I know that looking at her page, I love her vibe, and I would connect with anyone who, who follows her, or most people who follow her, right? So I'm going to go to her followers, and I'm just going to start going through everyone who's following her and 
follow them based on their profile. So you are kind of judging a book by its cover in a sense, but I'm going to go and see who's following this person and do I vibe with them? And I personally mainly only follow people who are public because you can't really see their page, obviously, if they're not public. So take a minute and just do that for one of those people. So I'm going to go to this girl, Lee from America, go to her followers and just start following. And literally the first two girls on here that pop up right away, I'm like, yep, I would definitely follow this person. Obviously, if they're a coach, don't follow them. Okay, so you're gonna, and this is something you do every day. Like you should set aside time every day if you really wanna build your Instagram. And even if you do this for five minutes, this will take hardly any time and you can have some really great new people added to your network. Um, and then you wanna write down who you followed. So create like a Google sheet. I don't have one created cause I just started consistently doing this. So I should create one, um, but create a Google sheet and just write down like the date and then the handle of the person you followed. And then in a day or two, you decide what day, but be consistent with it. Um, if they follow you back and you can just see by, um, going to your recently followed people, um, if they follow you back, then send them a message and make sure it sounds like you, any, I'm, you, I'm giving some scripts here, but really, really make it sound like you don't use this exact copy because then they're going to be like, oh my gosh, the same person's using the same script all over Instagram. So, um, for, this is just an example of one I might use. Hey lady, just wanted to tell you that I love your page. I'm also into whatever it is that you guys connected on. Um, ha and then ask a question. So actually the girl I just followed, I could tell she just got married and my one year anniversary is on Sunday. So I'm like, love talking about weddings and marriage and all that stuff. And I had so much fun planning my wedding. So I would probably say, when did you get married? I love your dress. I, my, my, um, anniversary is on Sunday. Um, and so just try to think of something that you genuinely would connect with them on. This is very similar to Facebook. I don't think the actual connection, um, steps are very different as far as how you should connect with people genuinely, but the way you go about it might be a little different. So that's an example. And honestly, just doing that, if you just take away that from this call, you're going to already have way more people you connect with on your Instagram and way more people that you're like, yes, I want to actually talk to them regardless if they sign up as a coach. You don't feel like you're wasting your time because you're actually talking to people you have a connection with. So that is alone why I love Instagram is just from that one slide. Um, so like I said, in, um, when you're talking to people, you really want to keep track, right? So say that person messages you back, you guys start talking, make sure you make note of that. And what I would do is you, whatever system you use to keep track of people, I personally use Asana. And if someone messages me back a week later, I put them in my Asana to pop up as a due date um, to invite them. Because I feel like, and it might happen earlier, it might happen more naturally earlier, but I feel like a week is a good time at least to start to get to know them and talk to them if it's going well. If it's like we're barely chatting and I feel like it's really forced, then maybe I'll push it off a little bit. Um, but after about a week, like I said, I, if you have a sneak peek or if it just naturally comes up, invite them, um, with a message to join your team. If you genuinely want them to, if you're like, I really vibe with this person, I'd want them on my team. <clears throat> and this is an example of a message I've used. Hey girl, super random. I know, but you seem like someone I would totally vibe with. I know we don't know each other in real life, but you're into so many of the same things I'm into. I seriously think you'd be into coaching. Have you ever thought of doing this as a part-time side thing? And I have to give credit to Keisha Fitzgerald, who was on my team call two weeks ago. Um, and she gave us this script and she was saying, this is what she specifically does also. Um, and I loved it. So I was like, oh my gosh, taking that because I've invited a ton on Instagram and had, I've had a lot of success and I can share my scripts with you guys, but sometimes it just, I wanted, to, I wanted to change it up, right? And I really want to start moving more towards presenting this as a part-time business opportunity. Um, so that was uh, something that really, really appealed to me. So that's an example of a script you guys can use. And of course, you know, make it sound like you. Um, can then, I ask you a quick question? Yeah, of course. So um, I, I have mostly been, and, and you're like the third or fourth coach to talk about like how you should like look for other things besides fitness that you have in common. Mm -hmm. I've mostly been concentrating on fitness because like I follow people that obviously are interested in things that I'm interested in too, but also fitness mm -hmm. because I feel like when you, when you send that message, it's like, Hey, would you be into coaching? And it's someone that like, has no fitness on their page, they'd probably be like, what are you even, because the difference with our business, right, is like, 
it's not lipstick or handbags or just like a random consumable. Like we have to actually be using the products. So how do you, like, do you, like, I feel like it'd be weird to say, am I the only one that feels this way? Maybe no, this no way. I don't think so. Um, no, I totally agree, Jillian. I have this, I try so hard to go out and find people who like, like baking, right? I'm yeah. like, I like baking mm. and, and nothing against other people who bake, but I feel like people who bake don't necessarily want to not eat cake. So <laughs> yeah. it's really hard to say, Hey, I love baking too, but do you want to stop eating all of it? <laughs> Like, yeah, no, yeah, I, think no I, yeah. I just, so like, I'm in that weird spot where like, I mostly look at fitness people because I do have fitness in common with them. Right. Like yeah, obviously in health, yeah. but mm-hmm. I agree. Like I, a lot of them are already doing something and they want to like continue doing that. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I don't know how to like go about being like, Oh, you're a new mom too. You want to be a coach? Like, I don't, I don't know. So that's where my struggle is. I think the, the, so there's two folds. I I totally get that. And I guess to a point there has to be some interest in it before you invite them to coaching. Um, this for people who really aren't like someone who's just into baking, but you're like, I really vibe with this person. I would invite them to challenge group first. Um, personally, um, that's a really good point. The only reason I am timid, to invite, um, and I, I should have prefaced this saying like hardcore fitness people, people whose accounts are solely about their fitness journey. They're like ripped. They have obviously something going for them because for me, and this is just my personal experience, nine out of those 10 people who would join my team quit because they don't want to do the workouts because they're already doing their own thing and they love it and they're having success with it. And that's just my experience. Maybe it's just my vibe. I don't know. But um, almost every hardcore fitness person I've recruited doesn't end up being a, a successful coach because they won't be a product of the product. So if there's someone though, like like Jillian, like you were saying, they're a mom and they're like into it, but it's not a, they're not like obsessed with it. It's not like their only thing in life. Then I think that's a great happy medium. So if you can find those people, that's awesome. Like I think that's a great you know thing to vibe on. I think it's just important to connect with someone besides the fitness part um, because. Again, you know, like CrossFit people are a really good example. I've, I've never had a CrossFit person, like a hardcore CrossFit person join my team. I've had a couple of friends who, who are coaches who have, but most of them ended up quitting and it's nothing against what it is. It's just, if you're not willing to do the workouts, it's really, really hard to be passionate about the business, you know? So I have to like think on that, I guess, but I hope that's an okay answer. I think it's like the fitness aspect's great, but also have something else to be in common with them. Um, and I think if you're like, I've found the more, like, I don't want to say blunt, but the more honest I am and just pretty direct in my invite, the better it's, it comes across. Um, one of my really great diamond coaches, she joked around. She's like, you cold invited me. And I signed up on the spot because she'd been following me for six months. She had been liking and commenting on my posts for six months. So that's what I love about social media is even if you maybe not have, and I'm not saying do this, like this was when I did like quote unquote cold. I don't still don't consider cold inviting because um, they had been following me and liking my stuff. But like, I just straight up asked her, I was like, I love your page. I love your vibe. You probably have no clue what I'm talking about, but do you want to learn more about what I do for my business? I would love someone like you on my team. And it was true. And she is now one of my best friends. So that's an anomaly thing. That's like a not common one, but I think this is a much more comfortable place to invite is to a challenge group. If you're, if you're just kind of getting into it. So this is an example of something I would send to someone who liked my Instagram story who or not liked it, who follows it or who liked my recent post is just, you know, thanks for supporting. I know this is super random. I hope you don't mind me messaging you about this, but I'm starting a new virtual bootcamp on Monday. I wanted to see if you'd be interested in joining just like on Facebook when someone likes or comments on our post, you know? Um, so again, this has worked really well for me. Um, I've hardly ever had people like get offended by that. So if there's someone who's engaging on your stuff, if they're liking and commenting, usually they will honestly be um, honored in a weird way. <laughs> like they, they really will be. I've had more people say, Oh my gosh, thank you so much for thinking of me. Like, I would love to learn about that, you know? Um, and then I loved the national wake up call from 1113 and I linked it here. So you guys can just like, you know, look, listen to it there or the podcast app is great. Um, and Meredith, I don't know how to say her last name, but she talked about making scripts personalized and really inviting in a really personalized way for your specific group. So it's not just a blanket. I'm starting a virtual boot camp, but like a specific one for you. So yours could be like a healthy baking boot camp. I, you know what I mean? Like just an idea. I don't know. Like stuff That's like that. Cute. Yeah. 
Um, I was going to say something. Now I can't remember what I was going to say on that. Oh, the great thing about stories, guys, if you're not doing it, which you can't do with regular Instagram, is that you can see who's just looking at your stuff. Mm -hmm. So like, like on Instagram, I might get a hundred likes, but maybe a thousand people saw it. Right. But on stories, it'll tell me exactly how many people saw it. And you can, Mm -hmm. usually it's a lot more people than maybe like to post. Like I get like, a hundred to 200 likes a post, but I'll have like three to 500 people seeing a story. So more people to reach out to. So I like that, that this is like, yeah, I love that. This is the same. And I'll show you guys like on Instagram stories. I have a little section on that where you, to show you how you can look at it too. Um, cool. So does that like help a little bit with that question? Um, you know, definitely like I would leave with the challenge group for in the beginning, if it's people you're just like, I'm not quite comfortable inviting them to coaching just yet. And honestly, the best coaches come from challenge groups. So, so your profile, this will be, I'm going to brace through this because, um, this could, I could go, we could have a whole call just about your Instagram profile and pictures and everything. Um, I am linking a, a PowerPoint I have from another call that my friend did for us. That's all about your profile, making it good and all that. So you guys can dive more deeply into that. Um, but you want to use a picture of yourself and you want to try to be cohesive. So have your, the same name on your Facebook, on your Instagram, on your Pinterest, on your YouTube, like have the same name. Um, and then your bio is 150 characters. And you want it to really explain you, what you're all about, what you offer, and provide a link in your bio. It gives you a spot to put a link. So put some type of call to action, whether it's if you're building your email list, it's a two-year freemium for them to opt in, or or just to your Facebook page or to your free community, Um, a link to here, join my free community, whatever it may be. Um, I'm not going to go into this now again to save time, but here's a link to something called Linktree. Um, and I'll show you guys uh, two profiles. I'll show you mine. And then um, you've probably heard of her. Haley Christian is like killing Instagram. And I love, love what she does with it. And she's a great example of someone like we are totally different people. Like we would never post the same. We don't have the same vibe, but I love her page and I love what she does with her page. So she's a really good example of someone who's using Instagram the right way. And she uses Linktree as well. Um, I started using it like a year ago, but I wasn't utilizing it the right way. So definitely look look into that after. Um, So what to include in your bio? You want your bio to say like, hey there, I'm, who are you? Most days you can find me. I'm mostly known for, people often refer to me as, I love serving the world by the things I'm most passionate about my life are. Because your bio is really important. That's like what people are going to see right away. Um, So here's just some questions in case you're still like, uh, I still don't know how to, um, you know, how, how can I make my bio me? Does it explain who you are, who your brand is, what you do and what, what you'll offer? Does your bio offer insight as to who your account will benefit? I think that's like the biggest thing is why will someone keep coming back to your account? That's what your bio should say. Does it explain what type of content can be expected? How it will benefit your target audience? Is there a call to action? Like I said, a clear way to get a hold of you. I put my email in my bio. Um, and do you have a, a link there as well? And I put attract and repel because so many people get offended if someone unfollows them. And I think like, it, it's just like on Facebook, you know, they're just not your people and that's okay. Like that makes room for the right people to come in. So don't get offended if people unfollow you, if, especially from this call on, if you're going to be more bold with your posts, which I hope you are, that's, that's good. That means you're putting us, you're, you're, you know, what do they say? Like you're drawing the sand on the line and you're, you're making your stamp and you're saying, this is what I stand for. And if you don't, that's okay, but you're not my person. You know, I've unfollowed people and it's not against nothing against them. It's just that I didn't, I didn't vibe with them and I didn't really believe in what they believed in or whatever it may be. So I want you to really quickly look at your last three posts on your feed and look at the engagement, what you've been sharing and which posts are like rocking it, right? Start to pay attention to your metrics and that just means the engagement comments. Engagement is way more valuable than likes. Likes are still good. But comments are really, really what's going to help your posts get seen more. And also that just means people are actually engaging with you. That's really, really key. They took time out of their day to comment on a post. Um, Pay attention to that so you can hone your message and images to an audience that will actually be so obsessed with your posts. Um, So review that and then think of what was that, what was the image of? Review your, your last three posts and say, what was the image of that really got the most engagement? What was the main point of the caption of that image and how many likes did it have? How many comments did it receive? So just take a second to do that.
Okay. And so just take note of that. And um, I'm going to give a couple of like the, like I said, the rest of the basics here at a couple of IG posting basics, but that's like a whole other call too. So I wanted to kind of give a little bit of each thing um, in this. So you guys, I'll give you uh, Jillian, I'll give you this PowerPoint so you can share it with them. Um, but the rest of the basics are there. So this is um, just basically now we're going to kind of move quickly into like what you should be posting. Right. Um, and again, I don't think it's crazy, crazy different from Facebook in a sense that captions matter way more than people think on Instagram. Like, yes, Instagram, it's visual is king, of course. And I think you have to uh, have, you have to have a good picture. You know, you can't get away with like blurry pictures or, or, you know, bad lighting. Like that's, it's just not going to do as well. You really have to be conscious about your picture and pictures are very important. However, like what you're posting is as well, if you just have a good picture, but you don't have any substance ever behind it, it's, that's not going to give anyone value. Right. So you want to act like your own follower, pretend you're just chat. So like, meaning when you look at your page, would you follow yourself basically? And if you say, Oh no, not right now. That's okay. We've all been there. So you're going to be able to work on that. Pretend like you're chatting with your best friend, just like your Facebook posts, your Instagram posts should be very conversational, very natural. Like you're talking to your best friend, um, message people. Like I was saying, who are watching your stories and liking your posts, um, connect and send private invitations, lead with a story and do natural invites. And I'll show you how Haley does this really well. This is actually a recap of Haley's, um, she, she presented at leadership and this is like a really, really great presentation. So this is like a, a, a super quick recap. Um, I'll show you that she does like different angles. It's not just like the same sweaty selfie. When I first started on social media, every picture was like the same angle, same sweaty selfie every day. And it's like cringing to look back at my time off and see that. Um, and smile, smile, like people just don't smile enough, I think in their pictures. Of course, I'm not saying every single time again, you don't want the same selfie, like I say down here, but you should definitely be showing your personality, showing yourself. And, um, you know, that's, again, I think that's the same across both uh, Facebook and Instagram. So this is, um, an example of what I mean by a natural invite. So you guys can see like, she's got all different kinds of like angles, you know, like this one, she's not looking at the camera. This one she is, and she's her dog in there. Um, this is like a, an actual selfie. This is with, I think that's her husband. So you guys can see like all different types, right? Um, let me see one. Okay. This isn't one where she has, but this is a really good coach breadcrumb. So you guys can look every single post she does is a breadcrumb or an invite. Pick one. I think it was this one that I saw. Okay. Yeah. So I won't read the whole thing right now just for time, but definitely go back and read this one. Um, she basically just talks about her transformation one year as a coach and how much it's changed and you know, what's done for her life. And then at the end she goes, um, peep the link in my bio. If you're that patient hustler I'm looking for, it's not like it, it's her. You, when you read some of her posts, I definitely think take like a, a couple minutes to read through them. Um, it's very natural. It's a very natural invite and it's almost every other post and it doesn't feel salesy. It doesn't sound like, Oh my gosh, this girl's selling me. You know, it's just, she's sharing her life. She's sharing her story. And even if you're like, well, I don't have that big transformation yet. That's okay. It's, it's not about necessarily the, the size of your weight loss or the, the amount of income you're making, like even a $50. Like I remember my first paycheck was 50 bucks and I put gas in my car in LA. And that was huge for me at the time. I was like, this is awesome. Like I just realized my computer's going to die. Let me just make sure my husband can lay down my laptop charger. Um, okay. Um, and so, you know, this is, it, it, I honestly think like when you don't have that big rags to riches story, it's even easier because people can relate to you so much more when you're just talking. She just freeze. Yeah. Megan, you're frozen. I'll ping her hand. You know what happened? I said I froze too for a second, but I'm like, wait, no. Oh, I'm you're there. Hold on. <laughs> I was like all into that too. Hold on. Oh, she just sent me a message. I'm so sorry. I'm plugging back in. Oh, her, she had a, com her computer. Um. 
She's coming back. Okay. Oopsie. Um, so I just got pinged with the nicest message ever. Somebody like messaged me out of the blue to be like, oh my God, you're such an inspiration. I finally took control of my life. Like seeing your posts, like Ooh. gets me moving. I love posts like that. I'm like, yay, I'm not annoying everybody. Just no, you're not annoying you. anybody. Honestly, like, like she was, Megan was saying when she was talking about how like people will be like flattered. Like, if you're going about it the right way, people will be flattered when you invite them and when you oh, talk to them. People say that a lot. They're like, oh, my God, I can't believe you thought of me. Yeah, totally did. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, like, what I'm saying. Like, I don't think anyone – I think I've only had one person ever be like, you're really annoying. Don't ever message me again. And I'm like, all right. But like, I had somebody once say, like, scroll up and read what I said last time. <laughs> Whoa. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But normally, like, people are really, as long as you're doing things the right way, as long as you're not, like, I have one girl, though, on my Facebook who she thinks she sells candles, and every time I put up a post, she comments with her link about her candles. Really? Like, her website. And that's kind of annoying. <laughs> like, I wouldn't go on her page and, like, comment on every post with my website, you know? Yeah. But, um, yeah, no, totally. It's, if you're going about it the right way, I'm like sucking this all in though. This is awesome. Oh, you're back, Megan. Okay, cool. Sorry. Um, and of course my computer is like, has your computer ever done that thing where it says it's in a different time? It's yeah. like, it says it's, it's being really written. It's like not letting me use it now. I don't know. Sorry guys. This is so uh, frustrating. Okay. Um, let me send, can I send you my PowerPoint really quick? Yeah. Um, so that you can maybe bring it up and I can just follow along there. I mean, I know basically the rest of it, but yeah. Um, I can't share my, my Facebook, fortunately, but okay. Uh, where are you? Okay. Okay. I just sent it. Okay. Oh, it's a Google Doc. Okay. It should be the presentation thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hang on. Sorry, guys. Uh, oh, I have 10%. Oh, it died. <laughs> Why is this not letting me share the screen? Hang on. Try this again. Come on. Okay. Um, but yeah, in the meantime, if you guys want to bring up... Um, I got like, it. Okay, cool. Like Haley Christian. Um, one thing I will say about any coach you look at, and I told my coaches this when they, when Jillian, when you talked to her, I think talked about like, go look at her page, go look at her post, like definitely um, get inspiration, but don't try to, and I'm sure you guys know this, but don't try to just copy it because it's going to come off that way if you do. So I find that sometimes for me, at least, especially lately, if I just like, go to other coaches pages for inspiration, I actually find I get less inspiration um, and I just play the comparison game. So I think look at it as far as seeing the, the type she does, like, and how she smoothly transitions into an invite and really makes it fun, but don't try to copy and then put it into a doc and re change it to be your words. Cause I've tried to do that a long time ago, like two years ago, more than that. Like three years ago, I remember doing that. Like I take the top coaches posts and try to make it sound like me and it never worked. It's always like bombed. So, um, that's one tip I wanted to just say. So you can move to the next slide, but yeah, I just wanted to put that link for you guys so you can look at her Instagram. You can move to the next slide, Jillian. So Insta stories. So this is my favorite thing as of late. Oh, okay. My computer's in the right time. So maybe I can, all right, I'll wait for that to load. Um, so Insta stories, the reason I think they're so important to do them is it's instant relatability. And also like Jillian said, so many more people actually see your stories um, not necessarily see your stories, but you can tell that they've seen your stories then on my, my post. Same thing. I get around one to 200, um, maybe sometimes more depends on the post, depends on the engagement and all that, uh, likes, but I'll get three, four, 500 people viewing my story and I have so many more people to interact with there. And you'll notice the same people following your story over and over and it's instant relatability. If they're coming back to your story, they laugh, they like you because you're being yourself. And 
there's so many times that I'm like, oh, I wanted to post that on Facebook, but you can't post 10 times a day on Facebook. People would like stop following you. But on Insta stories, you can, because that's what it is. It's a sneak into your life. So Ashley Smith is a really, really great um, coach to follow. She's um, in the top 10 and she did this presentation on Insta stories at leadership. Um, and she was saying how 80% of her business has been built on Instagram. She provides a backstage pass into her life using Insta stories. There's no need to sell when people can actually see that you're living and breathing it. You're doing your workouts, you're drinking your shake, you're, you're doing all the stuff that you're quote unquote selling and you're being proof it works, right? Um, engaging more closely and personally via direct message. So you can actually swipe up and I'm going to show you a, a slide in a couple minutes that, that shows you exactly what it looks like, but you can swipe up and see the people who are actually viewing your story and can directly message them. Um, and then it's an easy and non-scary way to invite. Honestly, I'm much more comfortable inviting on camera on a quick Insta story or even in a, if I'm not even speaking necessarily, but just doing a quick Insta story on it. Um, okay. My computer is working really quick. So let me just try to log in to your zoom meeting. 891-875. Oh, you're on your phone? Yeah. Oh. That's why I couldn't share my screen, <laughs> but now I should be good. Okay. Here, let me end. I'm going to stop my share. Oh. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Okay, cool. I'm going to stop my if share. You, if you want, I can share it if you want to stop sharing. Okay. And then I'll just so I can go with the. Cool. Piece. Okay. Um, so yeah, so actually raise it just like really quick while this loads, um, raise your hand if you use Insta stories or if you've started to use it or you, you like it. Um, awesome. So honestly, besides the first two slides that I think you should start implementing right away to start finding new people, um, right away, start using Insta stories and just have fun with it. I don't think there's a right or wrong way to necessarily use it. I think the same thing applies as, as with any post. Um, you know, you want to be yourself. You want to be talking to your ideal person, but you also don't want to be, you know, just selling, 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 of course, but you want to show what you're doing and it, you're doing your workouts. You're drinking your shake. Like be yourself, be honest and have fun with it. Um, so be the one thing she was talking about is create your own color wheel. And I really liked this. You can't see it unfortunately, cause it's, it's a little far away, but she has like, I think like nine or 10 different things that make her, her. So think about seven to 10 things like that you were doing in the beginning when you were talking about the ideal, your ideal coach. Uh, what are seven to 10 things that make you, you, what's your color wheel? So write out what are those things, and that's what you can post about. Because some people think, okay, what do I what do I post about? What's 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 interesting in my life? Like I do the same thing every day. There's so many ways you can make it interesting. I'm going to show you a couple different ways to make Insta stories even more engaging. Um, okay, so one one um, method is the tap 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 method, and I love this. And I'm going to show you. Um, I'll show you an example here that Ashley did. So she took a picture of her energize, hydrate, and her water bottle here, right? And she, the next, so if you guys know it, you know, Insta stories, but just for anyone who's like new at it, if you actually are tapping the screen, like most people go to it. And this is what I personally do. And I'll just keep tapping through people's stories, right. To go to the next one, go to the next one, go to the next one. So if you have a feature where every story builds on itself, it's kind of cool. And so this one, she had a picture of her stuff. What you do is you, you take that picture, you save it to your camera roll. The next story, you upload that same picture, and then you can add text to it. You can add sound to it. You can add whatever you want. And it's such a small thing, but it makes it really interactive. It makes it actually really fun to watch. So she, she did this where on top of that picture, she put my power plants as her energize instead of energize, electrolytes, water. And then she said up here, my perfect combo to get me energized, hydrated, and ready to work out. And that creates a lot of curiosity. Like people might say, what are your power plants? Like, what is that you're having? And, and ask her those questions. And that really gives her a chance for someone to actually interact with her and ask her those questions. 
So here's another example um, showing progression with recipes. That's a really great thing to do. If there's a recipe you love making and you know people would love it, then doing a, um, a tap, tap, tap series of each step of the recipe building on each other is really, really great. I, I love making these baked sweet, sweet potato fries. They're so easy to make. It's ridiculous. And everyone kept asking me how to make it. I was like, this is literally the easiest thing you can make. And so I did an Insta story of the step-by-step -step, and it was really fun. It was fun to do. And so many people messaged me saying that they made them um, and they tagged me in them and you can even make it a little competition and just giving value just like anything you want to be giving free content and free value to people and have fun with it too so that was like an example of how she started with all these greens and then she ended with her meal prep hey Meg um, this is another great example if you have a post that is um, advertising a challenge group or a coach sneak peek or a clean week group whatever it may be highlighting that post in your insta story so just take a screenshot of your actual um, Instagram page and then upload that on your story circle it with like like she used this bright pink and then she wrote check out the full details here so I think like a story or two before she was talking about her her next group and so she highlights it so that she doesn't have to say every single thing necessarily in the story but it's all written out on that post if people are interested they can check it out but she's just basically saying hey go look at this post it was important and so you can highlight some good things you have on your instagram she did that tap tap feature here because she highlighted it and then the next tap she added another um another bit of text so again you just save that picture upload it as your next story and then you can add text over it um, and like it says, this is for clean week. I think it's just perfect for anyone who doesn't know if they want to fully commit to an accountability group of mine yet. Um, so that was an example for that. Megan. This is another flashback. Um, and this is a before and after picture that she's highlighting. Um, another feature I wanted to show you guys is the poll feature. Um, and this is very new. I think it's only a couple months old and it's really cool to see what people's opinions are. And you could ask this for any kind of poll. You could ask this for a yes or no question. You can ask this for just any, anything you can possibly think of. She asks a lot of things about her kids, uh, about how other parents parent and things like that. Um, I recommend asking things you obviously care about and things that you genuinely wanna get people's opinions on, um, things like that. It could also help you for finding content because maybe people don't know about a certain topic, but they wanna know about a certain topic. You can ask those kind of polls. Um, so let me see if I can see what she says here. Uh, oh yeah, I think this was, she was talking about what time for your kids, is it morning or night? And so she had people vote. And the cool thing about the poll is you can actually see what people voted and how much people voted. So I, um, I have this like side business as well that I, I do macro coaching. And so I was asking people like, do you even know, do you know what macros are? That was my first question. Um, and then do you, do you know, sorry, do you know how to track? And then my next question was, do you want to know how to track? And so I got to see like, okay, like almost half my audience actually knows how to track. That's pretty cool. Like that's for me to know. Um, and the cool thing about the poll is when I swiped up, I could see 12 people voted yes, eight people voted no. I could see who voted yes and who voted no. So when you actually go to your own story and you see the poll, you just literally swipe up and because it's your story, you can see all these analytics. And then when you click on this little I number, I had 110 people view that specific story. Um, and that, yeah, that specific story. And so I can actually see, you can even see who swiped out <laughs> of the story if you go to these this little bar over here. So it's really cool because it could give you a lot of um, metrics. So this was a story that I did and I was speaking. So I could see I had 224 people view it. And one thing I wanted to highlight is up here, I was in um, Las Vegas for like three weeks um, and Spring Valley is like one of the areas I was in. And so I kept tagging Spring Valley in my actual story. So that's another tip is always tag a, a place. Um, obviously the one you're in there is better, but I know people who've tagged like the UK when they're not in the UK. So I um, am on Long Island, New York. Sometimes I'll tag the county I'm in, but a lot of times I'll just tag New York, New York because I'm very close to it. I'm in it all the time. And I get a way more people looking at my story when I tag New York, New York than my little town on Long Island. So um, I had 71 extra people see this story because I tagged Spring Valley. So it just gets more eyeballs on you, gets more local people on you. If you want to build a more local team or just connect with more local people, that's kind of cool. So that's one thing I try to always put um, the location, just even in the corner somewhere. And that's a, a tip for also your Instagram 
page when you post, I always post with the geotag, which just means a location, whether it's the place where the picture was taken or just a major city I'm near. Um, and I always try to tag something, whether it's like the brand that I'm wearing or a brand I really like in the actual picture. Um, so any questions on Insta stories, like anything that I just went over? I have a question. Um, so yeah, I, I agree. I feel way less pressure with stories. You can just, you're, you're yourself. You're just supposed to totally be yourself. And that's, what's fun about it. Can you hear me? Tap, tap, tap. Yeah. They're fun. They take a little more time. Um, which sometimes I'm like, Oh my gosh, this is taking me like 10 minutes. Hey, Megan, can you hear any of us? But it's fun. And I know when I go looking I back at it, I'm like, I get more engagement on those things. I definitely, definitely get more engagement. Um, Oh, no, I can't hear you guys. <laughs> oh, wait, now I can. Okay. Okay. I got right. to hear you. <laughs> I'm like talking and asking questions and I'm like, she's not answering You're me. like, Megan's ignoring me. You have, um, is your <laughs> Instagram business or personal? Um, mine right now is business, but I, I've heard 50, 50. So I don't know which is better yet, honestly. So, um, I changed mine to business because once you have 10,000 followers, you can do that scroll up thing and you can have a link on there. That's why I did it too. Yeah. Um, but yeah. now they're letting me, but, but now I can't push it to my Facebook stories. Mm -hmm. You can only push it to your Facebook stories if it's personal. Oh, okay. But now on my Facebook business page, like on my like page, I can do stories. Do you know? Oh, you can? Yeah, it just it just added the feature like two days ago. Oh wow, that's awesome. Do that's you know awesome. if you can now put? You probably don't know the answer to this. Then <laughs> I didn't know I that. Figure out how to push my Instagram business to my Facebook business stories. You know, I would love. I'm sure we can because they both own each other. So I think that should be allowed. Yeah. yeah. I kind of understand the regular, like not wanting to push to your regular page, but your business, it should allow you. If you find oh. that out before I do, let me know. Cause that's. Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. Same. Same. Oh my gosh. I didn't know that Facebook did that. Like I'm trying to only post on my business page now. So that's, that's awesome. Yeah. At least they, they do. It's like, right. At, it's obviously only mobile, obviously. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Finally. Yay. Cool. Sorry. Did you guys ask any other questions that I ignored? Cause I didn't hear you. <laughs> No, I, I think it was just me. I was talking okay. to no one. You're probably like rude. Um, so just really quick to kind of wrap up, like the biggest thing, just like anything is to get consistent. Of course, like if you're going to start using Insta stories, start using it and use it daily. Um, you know, you can have those days where you're kind of unplugged. And I say that like today, um, when I was, I was, my mom had surgery today. So I was at the hospital most of the day and I posted like three things when usually I post like 20. Um, and I had a date night with my husband on Sunday. So I was really unplugged. And I said that I was like, all right, guys, going to go um, get unplugged. They want you to know you're human too, but I'm very, very consistent on there and I have fun with it and they know what to expect from me. Um, get conversational, use the poll, ask them for their opinions, do the, um, tap, tap, tap thing, tag people in your Insta story as well. You can tag people just like on Instagram. Um, I've noticed too, when I tag like bigger brands, I tagged like Brendan Burchard when I was reading High Performance Habits and he responded. Um, I mean, who knows if it's him, but it was just really cool. Like most brands I've tagged, they've responded and it's just kind of cool to see that. And who knows, they might want to collab with you. You never know. Um, and then of course, like give lots of content, give lots of really good free content, just like on Facebook. Um, and if you, like I, like, um, Jillian was saying, if you have the 10,000 or more followers, you can use the swipe up option, um, so that people can just swipe up right away to go to a link, which is a really cool feature. Um, so three main things that I think you should take away is you want to find people that you truly connect with. So I think the first two slides as cool as Insta stories is as cool as all this stuff can be is if you're not finding those people then it doesn't matter. You know, the people that are coming to your page, you want them to be people you connect with. So make sure you take the time to go through that exercise again and find those people. And if you do it every day, even for five to 10 minutes, you just set aside your Instagram time every day, like to time block, then you're going to build this. You're going to see it happening slowly, but surely post valuable content. Like we were talking about that resonates with you and those people make your page visually pleasing to look at, um, captions that really speak to those people try to use like a very similar theme. You want to look at your page and be like, all right, this obviously has a similar color scheme or, or filter. She's using the same filter every time. Keep it fun and really ask yourself like, would I follow me? And if not, what do I want to change up that will still be me, 
but can still pop, can still make people go, oh, I want to keep looking at that page. Do natural call to invites in your posts and invite people who like and comment on your posts and follow your story. Um, and you guys know this is price preaching to the choir, but how many of your challengers have said, thank God you invited me because I was too nervous to ask for help. So many people, it doesn't matter where you're at in the business. I still have to invite people <laughs> all the time. It doesn't matter what, what you're, where you get up to, unless you have like a million followers, um, it's, you need to do those invites and know that people are so scared to ask for help when it comes to weight loss and you reaching out could be what they needed. So um, that's why I still really believe in those personal invites. All right, so that is a lot. I just rambled. <laughs> um, I hope this was helpful, but if you guys have any questions, like even after you leave here, just let Jillian know and you can ask me and I'd be more than happy to help. Yeah, that was awesome. Super helpful. Obviously, I asked a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah, no, they were good. I'm, and I'm excited about the like page thing. That's amazing. Yeah, if, if, if we can figure out how to push them automatically, I'd be even happier because I'm like the queen of efficiency, you know? That's why I stopped using Snapchat and I didn't use Facebook stories because I couldn't handle doing all of it. So. Same. So I didn't use Facebook stories until they let me push my Instagram to my Facebook. Yeah. And then when I switched to business, it stopped letting me do it. But that swipe up option I think is better for like links for um, yeah. like applications and email. Cause people are often like, I find too your point of like, Oh, people are afraid to reach out to you. Yes, they are. They're also afraid to comment on a post and say yeah. they need help. So if it's just a private message, like a swipe up that they can like, you know, use to do a private application or something. It's much yeah. better. So. That's why I like that. Um, Haley does this too, is she goes, peep the link in my bio. Cause I agree. Like I, I used to do the comment and I still say comment. Like I try to get people to comment something, not necessarily for a call to action, like mm -hmm. um, for a challenge group, but you want people to comment, like, what's your favorite? Like, would you choose A or B dress, you know, or whatever you want people to comment. But exactly. I found, I found that people just, they'll fill out an application without me without because no one knows it but they won't comment because they're too nervous too so i agree yeah. yeah this was awesome i so appreciate it, I know that hey, it guys, thank you for dealing with my technical difficulty <laughs> no, no worries. that's life you know um, it was does anyone have any other questions since i feel like i monopolized and asked all the questions but <laughs> Clearly, I just want, I want you guys to know that I don't have all the answers, obviously, because I'm on here taking notes, asking tons of questions too, so. Which is awesome. You're always learning, so. Yes. Yay. Thanks, guys. Anyone have any questions? No. All right. No, this is, this is all stuff I already knew, pretty much. It's just nice to hear the refresher again. Good. And just implement one thing, like just one thing that you guys either already know and just stop doing maybe, or you want to do more of like, just take one thing. Don't try to do it all at once. So yeah, yeah. for sure. Okay. All right. Awesome guys. Thank you for having me. All right. Thanks for coming. We'll chat soon. Bye. Bye.